a soul full of gracious. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Malada bara bara bashika bara. You are coming. You are all the things. Just words to try and describe. Hello, hello, I love you. The greatness is all. Hmm. There is nothing you cannot do. Yes. You can If you have said it, then you will do it. The track record of keeping you warm. You're not about to stop doing it now. How long will I cry? Mighty Lord, you are Lord. You are Lord. You are mighty Ah, level and a better side. Level and a cause. Yes. Yes, Lord. Marakabo. The Benebera Catitititis. Who? No, 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 be enthroned forevermore. You are mighty. 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 Shashora, 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 
You are my Lord. I worship you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Blessed be your name. Yes. Yes. In the mini talacole, siparitos, medediki miniso, agadoberete, sakalubarada, satayada, da, 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are God all by yourself, mighty thou art. We exalt you, Lord. We give you all the glory. You are Lord and God all by yourself. The O Mini, Mini, Mini. Thank you for a new day. What a mighty God thou art, the lover of my soul, the lifter up of our heads, he that breaks yokes, he that distance is not a barrier to. What a mighty God you are. We bow in worship, we bow in adoration to your holy name. Be glorified, Master. In the name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God most high. Amen and amen. I am glad to be here with you all and I bring you salutations and greetings from my family to everyone who is tuned in at this moment. The Lord bless you indeed in the name of Jesus. And to the congregation of God's people at the Restoration House, the Lord bless you all. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to the set man uh, on ground, Pastor Prince Atta. The Lord bless you and your crew. Hallelujah. And I also want to uh, thank every other person around the globe that is tuning in to this uh, telecast, to this channel at this time. God bless you and thank you for coming to church. It is church service. It is Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And we have gathered at the table of the Lord for a feast in his presence. Lord bless us today by the entrance of your word. Give light and give understanding to the simple. Let your word propel the new things that you are doing in our lives in this season. Let every man be launched into his place of glory. This is my prayer. May your word catapult your people, my God. Grant unction to your servant, I pray thee, that this lips of clay would declare the counsel of the Lord, the mind of God to his people. This is what I ask. This is what I pray. Let Jesus and him alone be glorified. Aha, aha, from this altar, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. At the wake of the month, and I want to read out the prophecy, the word of the Lord to you, to me, to us in this season. Again, I have come to know that time does not end. God, in Genesis chapter 1, created time. And time began to run. 
From Genesis chapter 1, God had a covenant with the earth. And the covenant he has with the earth, one of the covenants God have with the earth is the covenant of time. And then he set time, and time has been running ever since. Time does not stop. The earth revolves and rotates. It continues like that. God have also set a time that that rotation, that revolution will stop. That is when time will end. So time runs. Time is a continuum. But God in his wisdom also, even from Genesis chapter 1, calibrated time for man. Time is calibrated into days, weeks, months, years. Time is further calibrated into hours, minutes, seconds, and even nanoseconds. Hence, time have become the yastic of measurement. Time have become a standard. Every other thing is plotted against time. I didn't come to talk about time today. But I needed to give this background so you have an understanding Hence, the life of man also is being calibrated by God. Man's existence in time. Each individual have an allocated time, and it is called lifespan. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said so, that there is a time to be born and a time to die. So there is a time an individual enters into time, and he lives through time, and then exits from time. That becomes what is called lifespan. Praise the Lord. And that becomes the time of that man. Now, time also is calibrated, like I have taught again and again, into times and seasons. Again, all of this that I have said is just to lay a background to the prophecy, to the word of the Lord that have come to us. Hence, we celebrate or we see that the month begins and ends the year begins and ends now the essence of the calibration of time is so that man will apply himself to wisdom the essence of the calibration of time is because there must be an end and with every end there is another beginning there is an end and the beginning an end and the beginning praise the lord so God also deals with men in pockets of time and he calls them seasons, praise the Lord. So he gives a package of time between this time and this time. He said to Abraham, I will visit Sarah by this time next year and she will be with child. It helps man to plan, it helps man all of these calibrations. So when the month came at the wake of February, this year is a leap year, at the wake of of March, as February was ending, the word of the Lord came to me to bring to eight men and to bring to you in particular. And what is that word? And it came across in this manner. And I wrote, his word is clear. Once had he spoken, twice have I heard. And what did he say? Come up hither. It is a season of glory. From glory to glory is determined for thee in this season. In March, I take you to the next level. The new glory comes to you and your life moves up. In March, you go up. My word runs ahead of you to make happen as I have proposed, says the Lord, in March you move. Praise God. In March you move. He says, come up hither. Move. In March you move. For what has been proposed and determined of heaven for thee is that your life will move from glory to glory. In this year, in this season, hallelujah. Therefore, today, I will be speaking to us from that prophecy of God's word to us. 
And my topic today is when God says, come up hither, hallelujah. When God says, come up hither, what does he mean? What is God saying? When God says to a people, says to an individual, says to a man, come up hither. When God says, come up hither, what exactly is God saying? What exactly is God saying to his people when he says, come up hither? Turn your Bibles quickly with me to Exodus chapter number 24. We will read verse 12. Exodus 24 verse 12. The Bible said in verse 12, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up, Hida, come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tablets of stone and a law and commands which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Come up, God said to Moses. Now again, this instruction to Moses to come up, we may not fully understand until we go back to read verse 1 and verse 2. And then also we read from verse 9 to verse 12. So let's go back to verse 1 and 2 to read. In verse 1 of the same scriptures, Exodus 24, and he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. So Moses, Aaron, Nathan, Abihu, four names mentioned, plus <coughs> seventy others. So there were seventy-four men. God said to come up hither. Verse 2, and Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with them. So we see that there were a people of Israel, the entire crowd. Now, out of that entire crowd, God said to 74 men, come up to the mountain. The other crowd remain at the base of the mountain. Don't come near. Only Moses will come near. Now jump to verse number 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pale walk of a sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his cleanliness verse 11 and upon the nobles of the children of israel he laid not his hands also they saw god and did eat and drink verse 12 now and the lord said unto moses come up hither i'll stop there so we see that God spoke to the entire children of Israel and said to them, stay at the base. 74 of you come up. Now the 74 men came up, as it were, up that mountain. They saw God, they ate, they drank, they communed, they had fellowship. While they were there, God said to Moses, come up hither and I will give you the tablets of stone and you will read to the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Quickly jump to Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 1. We see God also making an invite, asking someone to come up here. Yes, and that person was John the Beloved at the island of Patmos. And, uh, and, and this I looked, that is verse 1 of chapter 4 of Revelation. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. 
come up hither and I will show you a revelation. I will show you things that will come to pass later in the future. And then to Moses is come up hither and I will give thee the tablets of stone that I have prepared and thou shalt teach the people. Now, if you also jump to Revelation chapter 11 and read verse 12, you would also see a people that were also invited. In verse 12 of chapter 11, the Bible said, And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them, my God. They ascended up, and their enemies beheld them, my God. This reminds me of the scripture that said, I will prepare a table for thee in the presence of thine enemies. <laughs> and they cannot do you any harm. Hallelujah. I will prepare a table. He said, they ascended up before their enemies. I don't know who you are listening to me here and now. The Lord says, come up. Oh, yes. Before thine enemies, you will rise. Before those who is been talking you down before those who is trying to pull you down and if care is not taken their lives will go for it if care is not taken their positions will be removed from them because before their eyes you will rise for he says unto thee come up hither hallelujah to jesus when God says, come up hither, what exactly is he saying? What does God mean when he says to a people, when he says to a person, come up hither, hallelujah. When he says, come up hither, what exactly is he saying? When God speaks to a people, like he has said to you and to me, come up hither. And it is the word of the Lord that in this month of March, you will come up here, my God. In this month of March, there is going to be a movement. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> there is going to be a movement, a movement of your life, a movement of things, a movement indeed. For when he said to them, come up, each person and at each situation that he has said, come up, there was a movement. Movement. There was something that happened, happened significantly to the people that he spoke to, to say, come up here. Hear me, child of God. God is saying to you, come up here. In this month of March, in this 31 days, hey, a baraka tupa, shole teve kandoshka. In this 31 days, <laughs> I, I will hear your testimony <laughs> because a movement has been initiated by the Spirit of God. Things will move for your sake. You will move because the Lord has initiated it. When he gives his word and when he makes an announcement and says, come up here, ah, it means that something is about to change. Hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> I am excited. Amen. Something is about to change. Amen. When God says, come up, when he says to a people, come up here. One, number one, what God means by saying, come up here, is that there is an agenda. Can I announce to you again? There is an agenda. There is an agenda that God is working with. There is an agenda that God is working at. God has or have an agenda. May I announce it again, that God have an agenda. You know, when we want to attend meetings, uh, you know, I have been presidents and I've been secretaries to bodies and all of that. You know, you meet as the secretary, you meet with the president, you meet with the chairman, as it were. And you draw up an agenda. The, the, the chairman and the secretary, you draw up an agenda of the meeting. Oh, yes. And as the agenda of the meeting is drawn up, you give direction. The agenda gives direction on how the meeting will run. We don't deal with anything that is not in the agenda. The agenda is the focus of the meeting. The agenda is the things that we will do. That how the, after this, that, after that, that, after that, that. It's a program. It's a plan 
for what will happen in the meeting. And then the chairman drives the agenda. He says, we are on agenda number one. And then we deal with that. We are on agenda number two. Only the chairman knows whether the agenda is three or four. Of course, in some settings, the agenda is sent out to everybody that will attend that meeting. So we all know the agenda of the meeting, that it is three. Three items in the agenda. Hear me? There is an agenda. That is why God says, come up here. God cannot be telling a people, cannot be making such an announcement if there is no agenda. Child of God, there is an agenda, my God. There is an agenda. There is an agenda. And he is focused on where he is taking you. Listen to me. An agenda is where we are headed. Like I have said, in a meeting, the agenda is where we are headed in this meeting. That is the agenda. We, we, are, we are discussing, this is the outline where we are going in this meeting. That's the meaning of an agenda. Hallelujah. God is on a journey with you. God is on a journey with your life. Child of God, God is on a journey with your life. Can I announce it again? God is on a journey with you. He has set the destination and he is driving your life in that direction. Kai, you did not hear me. He has has set the destination and he is driving your life in that direction in the direction of the destination he has set for your life and that is why there is an agenda hallelujah when god says to a person says to a people says to a man come up here it is because there is an agenda he is focused on that agenda and he is driving you in the direction of that agenda hear me an agenda is is something that is already determined before the meeting. Mm -hmm. An agenda is something that is already determined before the meeting. Can I announce to you that the agenda of your life was set before you came into time? Can I announce to you that God, before you began, the agenda was already set. The Bible tells me in the book of Romans chapter 8, if you read verse 29 and verse 30, the Bible Bible said that they whom he foreknew, he predestinated, and those whom he predestinated, that's verse 30 now, he, he, he called, and those whom he called, he justified, and those whom he justified, he glorified. Hear me, there is a foreknowledge of you before you became. There is a foreknowledge of you, God knew you, God knew you, and my God, I used to call him Omakansi Bill. The one who knows how I came about. The Bible said all my days are written in his books. There is an agenda, child of God, concerning your life. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 5, the Bible said, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, according to the good pleasure of his his will and in verse number 11 of the same chapter the bible said in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will according to the oh my god according to the purpose of he who worketh all things according to his own will child of god there is an agenda for your life there is an agenda and that is why God says, come up here. If that agenda was not, he will not say, come up here. Mm -hmm. There is an agenda. That is why God says, come up here. Hear me, child of God. Yes, before you came, before you became, before you came into time, he has set the destination before your journey of life began. Aha, aha. And he is focused on that agenda. He is focused on it. That is why he says, come up here. He is speaking according to the agenda.
You didn't hear that. He is speaking according to the agenda. According to the agenda that he had said concerning your life. Oh yes. Parakashoka. <laughs> in Genesis, sorry, in Isaiah chapter 62, if you read from verse 6 to verse 7, my God, he said, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, we shall never hold their peace day or night. Yea, that make it a mention of the Lord. Keep not silent. <laughs> yea, until Jerusalem becomes a praise in the earth. <laughs> Hear me, that is the agenda. Until your life become that which he ordained it to be. He said, he has set watchmen over thy walls. <laughs> oh, Prince Atta, <laughs> he has set watchmen over thy walls. Oh, Restoration House, <laughs> he has set watchmen over thy walls. Oh, Titilai, oh, Hakapa Shakai. He has said, Watch men over your destiny. Damini Koroshete Pavaladaya. Put your name there. He has said, Watch men over your life, over your destiny. Oh, Amarachi Umemis. He has said, Watch men. They will not hold their peace day or night until your life becomes a praise in the earth. Hear me, child of God. There is an agenda. When God says, come up hither, he is speaking, come up hither, according to the agenda. There is an agenda over your life. Child of God, there is a divine agenda in the name of Jesus Christ. When God says, come up hither, he is speaking in the sense of where he is going. He is speaking in the sense of the focus that he has set for himself. Yea, number two, when God says, come up here, it is irrespective of your past or your present. You didn't hear that. When God says, come up here, it is irrespective of your past and it is irrespective of your present. When God speaks, come up here, yes, yes, yes. For when he said to Moses, Abihu and Aaron and Nadab, when he said to them, come up here, he wasn't speaking in recognition of their past, neither was he speaking in recognition of their presence uh -huh, and their presence. Present. Hear me, child of God. When God says, come up here, he does not speak according to your past. Neither does he speak according to your present. He speaks according to the agenda he has set for himself over your life and your destiny. Ah, you did not hear that. He speaks according to the agenda he has set for himself. Oh, yes. When God says, come up here, he is speaking irrespective of your past, irrespective of the mistake you made yesterday, irrespective Perspective of what you how you failed yesterday when God says come up hither <laughs> oh they parapakatayada when he said to John come up hither there was no reference to his past when he said to Moses come up hither there was no reference to his past when he said to Aaron Abihu and Nadab come up hither it was there was no reference to the past child of God when God says come up hither he is speaking irrespective of your present he is speaking irrespective of your past in isaiah chapter 46 and verse number 10 the bible said declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure yes from time immemorial god speaks hear me child of god god does not consult with your past you didn't hear that mm. god does not consult with your past to make good his word over your life god does not consult with your past yes he does not neither does he consult with any man god does not consult with any man to make good his promises to make good his word over your life yes he does not in isaiah chapter 40 the bible said in verse 13 and in verse 14 and palo separicaso copara santele de vasaya who had directed the spirit of the lord or 
been his counselor or had taught him hey, with whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him his way of understanding. Who did God consult? Hear me. When God says, come up here, he is speaking irrespective of your present. He is speaking irrespective of your past. Hear me. He does not consult with any man to bring his will to pass, to bring that which he has proposed in his heart concerning your life. God does not consult with your past, neither does he consult with your present. Yeah, when he came to Moses, it was, he wasn't concerned with his present, neither was he concerned with his past. And he said to them, come up here, hallelujah to Jesus. When God, number three, when God says, come up here, he speaks despite the prevailing circumstances that you have found yourself despite the environmental factors and the external factors that are around you at the moment listen to me no matter what the economy of the nation where thou art is saying it cannot stop what god wants to do uh, irrespective of the noise that you are hearing around you irrespective of the noise in the city hear me child of god it will not stop what god wants to do with you and in your life when he says come up here it is because there is an agenda when he says come up here it is irrespective of the environmental factors yeah irrespective of the enemies within and the enemies without yes in the book of revelation we read in chapter 11 and verse number 12 he said to them come up here and they went up to heaven in the presence of their enemies yes the enemies saw them but they went up hear me child of god the plan of haman didn't it didn't stop the lifting of mordecai can i say that again the plan of haman the building of the gallo did not stop the lifting of mordecai hear ye the word of the lord oh yes the signing of the decree by the king himself did not stop the lifting of mordecai hear me child of god the external conditions irrespective the environmental factors irrespective god says i should say to you come up here it is time and it is time for him to make right his word it is time Time to move your life from glory to glory. Hear me. No matter the job the enemy have thrown at you, no matter the failures of yesterday, God is saying, come up here. Uh, no matter what I've gone down before, God is saying, I have an agenda over your life and destiny. No matter what you have seen, no matter the noise around you, God is saying to you, come up here. I have got an agenda. I have got a plan for you your life for they whom i for new i predestinated you are in my foreknowledge and i will do as i have proposed in my heart concerning your life when god says come up here hallelujah he is speaking irrespective of your past he is speaking despite the environmental factors around you despite the prevailing circumstances that you have found yourself Oh, yes. Number three, or rather number four. When God says, come up here, it is about a movement. And I'm most interested in this. It's about a movement. It's about a relocation, my God. There was none of those who he said to come up here that remained where they were. There was none of those to whom his word came saying, come up here, that remained at the level where they were. <laughs> when his word went forth to them saying, come up here, there was a movement. There was a change in location. There was a change in experience. My God, the people at the foot of the mountain, they didn't see God. 
<laughs> but when he said to these ones, come up here, they saw God, they ate, they drank. Their experience was different. When he said to Moses, come up here, his experience, there was a shift. That, oh my God. Child of God, a shift coming to you in this season. In this next 31 days, you don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? In this next 31 days, a baraka bashka, by this you shall know that the Lord has spoken. There is going to be a shift. Mark where your life was at, Genu at February 29th. And be careful to note where you will be by March 31st. You will understand that this God does not consult with any to do what he wants to do. You will discover that this God is a mighty God. You will discover that irrespective of what, listen, a lifting, a promotion is coming to someone under the sound of my voice. You did not hear me well. Ah, I said a promotion is coming to someone under the sound of my voice. Irrespective of what has happened, irrespective of what is you are hearing and what you are seeing, hear me, child of God. When God says, come up here, it is because he wants to initiate a movement. He wants to initiate a relocation, my God. He wants to initiate a change of environment. He wants to initiate a change of experience, my God. God is saying to someone, a movement is about to come your way. In these next 31 days, there shall be a relocation. Hear ye the word of the Lord. There shall be a movement at hear me child of God is going to bring prosperity it is a new experience it is a new favor hear ye the word of the Lord it's a new increase you are coming into that hand desire my God someone have believed God for something for some time now <laughs> the Lord is delivering that into your hands within these few next days yes I said few next days Hallelujah. That was what I just said in the few next days. Yes. Uh, uh, grammatically, what I just said may not sound correct to English people, uh, but I speak by the unction of the Lord to you. Oh, yes. Yes, grammar will say in the next few days. That is what grammar, I know grammar, uh, but I speak by unction to you today. Something unique. Now, I, I may not pinpoint it, but I know it like I know my name. Someone is moving into a new accommodation. I just heard that. In fact, right now you are you are you are you are wondering how will it happen? Because one or two things that will make that happen is not available uh, with you now. But hear ye the word of the Lord. You will return to this platform to testify. Mm -hmm. You will return to testify, my God. Someone under the sound of my voice will get a promotion in your place of work. It is coming. You have known battles, but that battle will culminate into your lifting. Thank you, Jesus. A movement. When he says, come up here, it is because a movement he has initiated. Listen, God has deployed the resources of heaven to ensure that you come into this new experience to ensure that you come into this other side yes god is taking you to a new level it's a new level of operation yes that is what you are about to experience in these next few days hey yeah someone will encounter a destiny helper mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the stone i see a hand roll away that stone the stone that you have been looking at and wondering about you have been wondering what about this stone a hand i just saw a hand roll away this stone i just saw a 
and roll away the stone. Child of God, it is your season of rejoicing. God says, come up hither. Come up hither. There is a new height you are attaining in these few days. There is a movement. Hey, hey, some of you, it's a spiritual movement. Your spiritual muscle is, is expanded, is extended, my God. Some of you will begin to walk in a new realm of authority. Authority in the spirit. Aha. Yes, yes, yes. That's the movement. That's the movement, my God. Some persons under the sound of my voice, the movement is spiritual. You will begin to operate in a dimension higher than the dimension you have operated before. When God says, come up here. Yes, for every people that is said, come up here, that we read in the Bible, in the book of Exodus and in the book of Revelation, there was a new experience. Yes. When he said to Nadab, Abihu, and Aaron to come up with the 70 elders, they had a new experience that they have never had before. When he said to Moses, come up here, he had a new experience. He said, I will give you the tablet of stone that I wrote by myself. Oh, yes. Yes. In the book of Revelation, when he said to them, come up here, when he said to John, come up here, it was to show him what was to be hereafter. Yes, an experience John have never had before. When he said to them in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12, come up here, yeah, they had an experience before they were at the level of their enemy. Their enemies could do whatever to them. But as they went up, the heavens opened, they went up in the presence of their enemies and their enemies could not do them anything. Hear me, when God says come up here, it is because a movement has been initiated in the spirit. Hallelujah. Come up here is a command. Come up here is not a suggestion. Hey, come up here is not a suggestion. Come up here is a commandment. Come up here is a command. And when a command is given, what is expected is obedience, my God. When a command goes forth, what is expected of the command is obedience oh my god you did not hear me when a command is given what is it what the the reaction to a command is obedience everything that is commanded everything that comes under the influence of that command responds with obedience you did not hear me <laughs> listen to me Inanimate things will come to your aid. <laughs> people you do not know will come to your aid. Laws, people will stand for your matter. Men will speak on your behalf will carry your matter on their head because they are under a commandment. <laughs> when a commandment goes forth, everything under the influence of that command responds with obedience. Even the devil responds with obedience. You did not hear me. <laughs> I said, even the devil responds with obedience. The Bible said in the book of Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 11 that the fish received a commandment. <laughs> Ah, when Jonah had finished with God in the belly of the fish. Listen, Jonah was in the belly of the fish and the fish was in the belly of the ocean. It was a whale. Whales don't swim at the surface. Whales go deep down, like 200 meters down deep into the ocean. That's where they dwell. That's where they swim. Hey, right there, deep down there, the fish had the commandment. Go vomit Jonah. Deliver Jonah to Nineveh. That commandment came to the fish. The fish obeyed. The fish began to swim. Remember, Jonah was on his way to Tashish. Jonah was in the ship to Tashish. Oh, Abarakapatu Parabada Shante Labada. The fish swallowed Jonah on the way to Tashish. Mm -hmm. and began to swim around that region. But when the commandment came, the fish found its way to Nineveh, to the shores of Nineveh and vomited Jonah there. Ah, there was a regurgitation in the fish's belly and the 
spewed out Jonah. And Jonah found himself, received free transportation to Nineveh. Why? Because it was a commandment given by the Lord. Hear me, child of God. Come up hither is a commandment. And I need you to know today that everything that has hearing. Now, you may think that stones don't hear. You may think that stones don't speak. You may think that trees don't hear, that they don't speak. <laughs> but you lie. Oh, you have not taught well. Because the Bible said that morning by morning, they, they worship God. They utter speech unto God. Yes, you don't hear their voice. You don't hear the sound that they make. Oh, yes. They see. They speak. They hear. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when he says, come up here, it is a commandment that he has issued out. And everything that have ear hears it, that for this one, movement is being ordered for her. She can't remain in this position. She can't remain a tenant. She can't remain in my God. She can't remain in this position. So everything begins to work in sync to ensure that that movement happens. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. When a commandment is given, when he says, come up here, it is also an invite. It is an invitation. Invitations are honored. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Invitations are honored. In fact, it is rude to receive an invitation. You won't honor it and you won't respond to it. That's why in every invitation card, they write R-O-S-V-P. Praise the Lord. R-O-S-V-P means respond. Whether you are coming or not coming, respond. This is the address. Call this number to respond. Honor the invitation. Praise the Lord. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30b, the Bible said, God speaking, he said, I honor those that honor me. Mm -hmm. For he is not a respecter of persons. Hear me, child of God. He has given an invite. And it is an honorable thing. Yes, your life will only honor God by becoming that which he has commanded. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. Hear me, child of God, honor comment to thee. God says, come up here. In this march, your life will move forward. There is a movement that is being initiated by heaven. The resources of heaven is being deployed for your movement, for that shift to happen according to divine agenda, according to the plan of God for your life and destiny. You are coming into a place of beauty. You are coming into a place of joy. You are coming into a place where you will know peace round about. There's a lifting coming your way in this season. Believe it, child of God. I can't wait to hear your testimony. Is gone. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you still hear me now? Praise God. I had to adjust my mic. I guess it went off. Can you hear me now? Hallelujah. Is someone still hearing me? If you are hearing me, I need you to wave at me now. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to get into the communion. Amen. Praise God. So quickly prepare, prepare. Uh, uh, bread, 
and uh, get a drink, non-alcoholic, please. Non-alcoholic drink. Prepare it right now, and I'll give you two minutes to prepare your communion, just two minutes. And in these two minutes, we will be praying. God bless you. I see the hand wave. God bless you. Thank you very much. I was informed that my volume had gone off. And um, thank God you are still hearing me. Amen. Quickly pray for yourself. Speak concerning your life. Spread his words into your life. Yes, yes, yes. According to the word of the Lord, so shall it be unto me. Be it unto me according to thy word. That was the words of Mary. May that become your word today. Be it unto me according to your word, O God. Be it unto me according to your word. still hear me now praise god can i be heard can you hear me now glory to jesus glory to jesus glory to jesus i give you praise please let me be informed if i can be heard thank you lord and when supper ended the bible said he took the bread And he gave thanks and said, take this, eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we come to the table of communion and we lift up the bread according as your word has said. And we give you thanks. And we speak over the bread in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For it becomes the body of Jesus, broken for us. Lord, we come doing in remembrance of you. For you have taught me, Lord, that at the table of communion, when we break bread, we do not only remember your death, but in doing this, it carries the same power that was emitted on the same day that this was practiced first. Mm. Therefore, Lord, we receive the body yes, in the name, the body of Christ, in the name of the Father Amen. and the Son mm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm. Let the miracle begin now, mm. according to your word for this season, in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And scripture said that he took the cup and he blessed it and said, take this, drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. 
ablene bababari oboroshi gamaviga slalando sofegi tisekumanongo de brete sekeria according to your word lord we bless the cup of communion in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit we receive the cup as the blood of jesus the blood of the new covenant and by the blood today we covenant with you according to your word and the things that you have spoken that they become reality in our lives within these 31 days of the month of march let the movement begin now let the shift begin now let the prosperity come let the new level begin in jesus name we have prayed my god by the blood will cancel out every equation that the enemy have put together by the blood we cancel every hand and voice of the enemy speaking in jesus name we have prayed amen, amen and amen. amen thank you father god bless you i will go off air right now go ahead and take the communion i'll be with you by the prayer hour later today the lord keep you the lord bless you Amen. join me at the covenant hour of prayer later today for those of you in the uk it will be by your own 5 p.m for those of you in west africa uh around nigeria it will be by your 6 p.m for those of you in the pacific region that use the pacific time those of you in canada it will be your 9 a.m. For those of you in America using the Central Standard Time, it will be your 11 a.m. For those of you in Cameroon, in South Africa, in Egypt, in the Middle East, it will be your 7 p.m. I will be with you again at that time that we may pray together. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please partake of the communion and pray some more as the Lord will lead you. Shalom.